Holy Paladins have somewhat of a negative image going into TBC Classic, and if you've ever seen a video of a Paladin healing, you might agree, but I think the talents, and more importantly the variety of ways you can spend your talents, is a real X factor for them. Let's start by going through the first 41 talents that I think every build should have. The first row will put 5 points in Divine Intellect. It increases your total intellect by 10%, and as we continue down this path, you'll begin to see how integral intellect is to this spec. In the second row, we have Spiritual Focus. This talent gives us a 70% chance to avoid spell pushback with Holy Light and Flash of Light. And this is good for all healers, but it's a must-have for Holy Paladin specifically because we're always casting spells, and as you'll see in just a bit, our mana regeneration is also tied to casting spells. Healing Light gives you a 12% increase to the total healing done by Flash of Light and Holy Light. And as a Paladin, most of your healing is Holy Light and Flash of Light, so this is basically 12% increased healing for only 3 talent points. Aura Mastery is another must-have talent in this row. It extends the range of your auras by 10 yards, giving them a 40-yard range instead of 30. It's more valuable than you'd think. For example, Shadow Priests have no passive spell pushback reduction, and on fights with spell pushback, they rely heavily on your Concentration Aura. And him losing Concentration Aura because he was 31 yards away is a huge hit to your group's mana regeneration. We have one talent left that we need to fill before we get to the next row, and Improved Lay on Hands is the best choice here. It gives your Lay on Hands a powerful armor buff attached to it, as well as reducing its cooldown by 10 minutes. Illumination is where things start getting juicy. Not only is it a good talent, but the synergy it has with other talents in the tree adds a layer of depth to a spec that would otherwise be very shallow. Whenever you critically strike with Holy Light, Flash of Light, or Holy Shock, you gain mana equal to 60% of the base cost of the spell. Keep that phrase base cost in mind because it has a very powerful implication later on. Next to Illumination, we have Improved Blessing of Wisdom. It's another mandatory pick as it gives you a flat 20% increase to your mana per 5 blessing. Since Rhett and Prot Paladins would have to go too deep in the Holy Tree to get this talent, it makes Holy Paladins even more desirable, at least in quantities of 1. Divine Favor is your next talent here, and it's one of your throughput cooldowns as a Holy Paladin. When you activate this, it gives your next Holy Light, Flash of Light, or Holy Shock a guaranteed chance to critically strike. At a first glance, you might not think this is crazy, but it has the incredible advantage of being off global cooldown which allows you to use this ability reactively to damage. And relating back to Illumination, since you have a 100% chance to critically strike with Divine Favor, you have a 100% chance to gain 60% mana back. And Divine Favor is often paired with your max rank Holy Light, since Holy Light's your highest heal, and it's also the highest costing mana spell you have. But in an emergency situation where an instant heal is required, you could pair it with Holy Shock too. Next to Divine Favor, we'll pick up 3 points in Sanctified Light, this gives us a 6% increased chance to get a critical strike with Holy Lights. And right below it is Holy Power, which gives us an additional 5% critical strike, but it applies to all of our spells. Since Illumination gives us mana when we get a critical strike, these two talents are not only throughput talents, but also help with mana regeneration. I've made several mentions so far about Holy Shock, and it's a talent we're going to pick up, but we're not going to use this spell very much because of its poor range and mana efficiency. It is an instant heal though, which is something the Paladin lacks. It also doubles down as a damaging spell, and you'll be happy you have this outside of raids, since it significantly increases your kill times while grinding. Light's Grace causes your Holy Light spell to make your next Holy Light have a reduced cast time. Like Illumination, this talent also contributes to adding depth to the Holy Paladin playstyle. If you know you need to have Light's Grace up, but you don't have a need to cast Holy Light at the moment, you can get Light's Grace up cheaply by casting Holy Light Rank 1. Onto the pen ultimate talent, Holy Guidance really pulls the spec all together. It increases your spell damage and healing by 35% of your total intellect. Like every other healer, intellect gives us out of combat mana regeneration, mana, and spell critical strike. But for paladins it has the additional benefit of giving us bonus spell damage and healing, as well as increased mana per 5 during combat through illumination. For our 41st talent we have divine illumination. This talent is another throughput cooldown, which when activated gives you a 50 
50% reduced mana cost on all spells for 15 seconds, which doesn't seem very good at first, but let's go back to Illumination. Remember how it specified that healing critical strikes refunded 60% of the base mana cost and not just the mana cost? Well, you've probably put it together by now, but when you get a critical strike while Divine Illumination is up, you actually gain mana. That's because Divine Illumination is reducing your mana cost and Illumination is giving you mana back as if you didn't have a reduction in mana cost. So that's the 41 mandatory talents in the Holy Tree. And the rest can be spent in a variety of ways depending on what you want to bring to the raid. The first build I'm going to mention is kind of antiquated, but there was a time in the original release of the game where I had to play this build, so I wanted to mention it. In patch 2.3, Blizzard changed the Improved Seal of the Crusader talent, which is a retribution talent. They basically made it so when the Rep Paladin used Judgment with Seal of the Crusader active, it applied a debuff to the target that increased everybody in the raid's critical strike against that target by 3%. And everybody wanted this debuff, but on Alliance, nobody played Rhett Paladin. So I listened to them, and it actually turned out to be one of the most fun times I've had on a Holy Paladin. I brought Improved Blessing of Might, Improved Blessing of Wisdom, Seal of the Crusader debuff, and I was healing the main tank. But by patch 2.4.3, Rhett had received some significant buffs, and now that Alliance are getting Seal of Blood, I don't think there will be many guilds who won't have a Rhett Paladin doing this already, and it is much easier for them to do than you. But there still might be people doing this in Karazhan, since you're not necessarily guaranteed to have a Rhett in your group, like you are in a 25 man. On to more serious builds, we have the Improved Blessing of might build. Just like the Improved Seal of the Crusader build, you go and get 5 points in Improved Blessing of Might, and you get Blessing of Kings. But instead of spending 3 out of the 4 points on Improved Seal of the Crusader, we're free to spend it in the Holy Tree, where we can pick up a variety of utility talents depending on the situation we're in. For general use and progression rating, I like Blessed Life. It gives you a 10% chance to have the incoming damage of all attacks. Purifying Power can be a good pick for super farm status content. This is pretty good in Karazhan because there are a lot of demons in there to take advantage of the increased critical strike with Holy Wrath and Exorcism. Pure of Heart gives you a high higher resistance to curses and diseases, while Unyielding Faith gives you a higher resistance to fear and disorient effects. Both do have their moments, but they're not as consistent as Blessed Life. There is one more build to talk about, and that's called Improved Concentration Aura. In this build, you take the 41 mandatory Holy Talents, plus two additional free points, and the rest goes in protection. The purpose of this build is to get the Improved Concentration Aura talent. This talent grants your Concentration Aura an additional benefit, which has an insanely high impact in certain situations situations. The way it works is anyone who's affected by your concentration aura has a 30% reduction to the duration of silence and interrupt effects. And its benefit can't really be overstated in certain encounters. One that comes to mind is Gruul. He has a raid-wide silence called reverberation. There's no way to avoid it and it hits everybody. This is where a lot of wipes happen because if people are not stable before entering the silence, there tends to be a lot of deaths. If a paladin is grouped up with all of the healers, improved concentration aura reduces all of their silences from 4 seconds to 2.8 seconds, allowing you to recover much faster. Keep in mind that the talent also increases the effect of the regular concentration aura, which means that you could potentially provide a class with no spell pushback reduction, 50% spell pushback reduction with this talent. So that's pretty much it. The only thing I didn't mention was the case of someone else bringing Blessing of Might, which is quite unlikely because Rhett and Prot would have to sacrifice much more important talents than you would to get improved Blessing of Might. In this case, you don't even need to choose between talents, you just pretty much fill up the whole holy tree but I wouldn't really bank on this happening. So I hope this video offered you some new perspective on the Holy Paladin. They have the incredible ability to adapt their utility to fit the situation, and that's all done via talents. I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.